Have you ever wondered which one is better, stevia fruit or monk fruit for your sweetener? Hello, my successful and healthy earthlings, Mihaela Ragusia, naturopath and founder of the Natural Health Podcast. In this episode today, I'm going to set it straight, which one is better, stevia or monk fruit? And in this episode, I'm going to give you an opportunity to join a health and success oriented community by clicking below and joining the Natural Health newsletter. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness to sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural podcast is perfect for the high-performing business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Wednesday, which means it's time for What Would I Do? In this episode of Natural Podcast, I answer your questions. That's right. And I answer them is in the case of what would I do? The information provided is not to be taken as advice and is solely for information purposes only. I'm not here to cure, treat, or provide medical advice. I'm here to educate and inform you so you're able to take steps towards optimal health. Please discuss any medical issues with your healthcare professional. Let's get into today's question. Today's question is what is better, stevia or monk fruit? What an absolutely great question. And this is not the first time that I received this question. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to answer this question. So I'm going to answer it on natural podcast. So we'll put an end to it. But let's first have a look at the impact of sugar without stevia or monk fruit on your body. It could affect your brain health. It could contribute to poor oral health. It can even impact your sleep, right? It can lead to gain, your gain to weight. It can cause some liver issues. It can harm your heart. It can harm so many organs in your body. And what I'm talking about is excessive sugar intake. Cause mood disorders such as anxiety, depression. Can raise your risk of diabetes. Cause inflammation or raise your inflammation. Increase the risk of any immune disorders, autoimmune and so forth. Can weaken your immune system. And it can even cause pain. These are just some of the things that sugar can do. It can do so many other things and it's proven to do so many other things. And this is a extensive intake of sugar but we're talking about stevia monk fruit but i just thought i'll put that out there what sugar does first and because of all this individuals are looking for an alternative for an alternative such as stevia monk fruit and it's been out there and everywhere you look on the shelf it may be an alternative a swap hey put stevia in this hey put monk fruit in this instead of sugar but what is stevia Stevia is actually a sweet tasting plant extracted from Stevia rebodiola plant, which is actually native to Brazil and Paraguay. So anyone from Brazil would know what Stevia and has used Stevia before. Human ha- humans have used Stevia to sweeten food and drinks since the 16th century, um, and it's also grown in China and Japan. In terms of taste, if you've ever tasted Stevia by itself, it is a very powerful. It's said to be about, depending whose taste buds and what you're looking at, about 250, 300 times sweeter than sugar the advantage of it is that to regular table sugar or official sweeteners are similar to so it's it, so the advantage of stevia is that it's zero calories zero carbs and zero sugar and this is why it's such a great alternative or individuals use it as a great alternative to sugar and we'll talk about if it is or isn't and then you have monk fruit some people may or may not have heard about monk fruit but it has small green ground that resembles a melon. It kind of looks like that. And it's grown in Southeast Asia. The fruit was first used by Buddhist monks in the 13th century. Hence its fruit's unusual name. Monk. That's really cool, isn't it? I love these. Um, I love history about herbs and fruit and where their names came from and so forth. Fresh monk fruit doesn't store well and isn't appealing. But monk fruit is usually dried and used to make medicine teas. Monk fruit sweeteners are made from the fruit extract and they're blended usually with dextrose or other ingredients to balance the sweetener. And this is where you have to find out what's actually in your stevia and monk fruit. And it's actually told to be a bit less than stevia, 150 to 200 times sweeter than sugar. And same as stevia, it contains zero calories, zero carbohydrates, zero sodium, and zero fat. So even though, so what I want to put out there is that stevia and monk fruit are both a natural choice compared to artificial sweeteners such as aspartame, saccharine, and other syncretic ingredients, sucrose, and so forth. Absolutely better, right? Let's have a look at some of the benefits. Uh, let's compare stevia to monk fruit because that's what your question was, which one's better, right? Let's first look at stevia, some, some good things about stevia. Um, stevia is sometimes used by herbalists to actually break down the walls of bacteria which is absolutely amazing so you can actually benefit gut flora that's one of the benefits 
The other one is, is that it may actually lower your risk of obesity and diabetes, and that's because you're using this instead of other sugars, right? It, can, it contains antioxidant compounds, including chemophrol, which can gently reduce the risk of pancreatic cancers in some research has shown. It can help you manage cholesterol and help you satisfy and keeps you full for longer. Now, monk fruit. Monk fruit, the same as stevia, can help reduce obesity and diabetes because you're using this instead of sugar. Uh, it can promote anti-inflammation, can reduce allergies, and can reduce damage of free radicals. So as you can see here, monk fruit and stevia have so many health benefits, not just by being a zero sugar, zero calories alternative sugar, right? But they, but they themselves as individuals come with so many other benefits. Plus, while many artificial sweeteners, they put havoc on your gut, monk fruit and stevia, they're not artificial, meaning they probably, I'm saying probably, depending on which one you're using, because some may cause bloating, um, don't cause that many gut issues. These natural plants have a sweet taste of, uh, without the harmful effects on the gut, but there are some individuals that take other stevia or monk fruit and they get bloating or digestive issues. Um, and this has to be looked at and this has to be done on a case by case basis. But to answer your question, the first questions I want to ask you is what are you using the monk fruit or the sweetener for? Are you using it in your coffee? Are you using it in cakes? Are you just eating it like this? What are you using it for? And then also the taste, right? Try monk fruit by itself and try stevia by itself. Which one, do, which taste do you actually like better? And then the other thing is, is what are the ingredients in the stevia and the monk fruit? For example, if I have a stevia next to me and the, 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 the ingredient is 100% stevia, organic stevia, 100% stevia, compared to monk fruit, which has dextrose in it um, included, my, my choice would definitely be the stevia. Um, not the monk fruit, but it depends what the ingredients are in it, right? And where it's sourced from. The other question is, do you have any allergies to either one of them or their families, where they come from? Some individuals can't stand monk fruit because they're allergic to the family it comes from. Some people are allergic to the family stevia comes from. Also, where is the source from? Where is it grown? Where is the source from? Are there any chemicals? What are the reports of the chemicals? So touching base with the companies that produce these and being like, hey, can you please provide me if it has any harmful uh, bacteria, fungus, or any chemicals in it in the production process. What would I do? What I would do first is is figure out what I'm using it for. I would try each one, see what tastes I like, and then I would, before even that, I would contact the companies of 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 let's say okay, let's say I tried one and I really like let's say stevia. I would contact that company and find out what ingredients in it, where they're sourced from. If I like some monk fruit, I'll contact them too. And then I'll put the two together. If one has toxins and the other one doesn't, of course I'm gonna choose the other one. If the other one has additional ingredients in it that doesn't sit well with me, I'll choose the pure one, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is, is, is monk fruit, no stevia is better than the other. It depends on your individual choice. It depends on not just individual choice, but it also depends on the company that you're sourcing it from, right? However, I strongly advocate for eating food that is minimally processed as possible. 100% and I always talk about that. To say that these low calorie natural sweeteners are completely separated breed from artificial sweeteners is possibly not true or safe to say. They still kind of fit into that process, right? We still need to do a lot more research in monk fruit, in stevia to actually determine the benefits and the cons of each one. However, I think we should be focusing less on which sweetener, if it's stevia or monk fruit, we should be using, but more on how much sweetener we are using and reducing that. Why are we craving the sweet taste? Why do we need so much sugar in our diet? Or why are we looking for so many alternatives to sweeten up our life? Why is our life not sweet enough already? That is my question to you. Think about it. So instead of thinking, am I going to have monk fruit? Am I going to have stevia? Think about why are you chasing the sweetness? Is it because of your gut bugs? Is it because your taste buds? Is it because your nervous system? What is actually happening? And why are you craving these sweet um, sweeteners, right? So there you have it. I hope I answered your question and said some light on the monk fruit versus stevia debate and share this episode with anyone that you think needs to listen to this debate. 
if anyone has any information comment below let me know i'm all i'm all ears i want to learn if you have any information on stevia or monk fruit that's either good or bad share it with me or if you know any other sweetness share it with me there you have it do what you do best love like share the natural health podcast if you want every friday specials being sent into your inbox click below and join the natural health newsletter subscribe hit the bell notification button on youtube so you are notified when all these episodes become available and remember thank you so much for joining us on natural podcast remember the missing link between failure and success is your health Content and information provided here is the opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstances, Census Shell Natural Podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the Natural Podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the Natural Podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited supplements diet lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguz nor the publisher of this contact takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in educational content.